Hey, good morning, everyone. My name is David Wicks. I'm Vice President of Listings here at NASDAQ. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Behind the Bell and what a company we have to talk about today. So we have a company, Up Fintech, which priced its IPO last night at $8 a share. Citi uh, was the lead underwriter and it is now trading up almost, you, you can see better than I over my shoulder, 24%. 24%. So joining us is John Zeng, the Chief Financial Officer. John, welcome. Thanks a lot, Dave. Thanks for having me here. This was an exciting morning. Oh, yeah, of course, it's, 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 it's fantastic. Yeah, and, and it's, it's interesting. So we were talking a little bit about your background. Right. You were on the ECM side. Right. Now you're on the public company side. Right. Uh, this is the best IPO I ever did. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yeah. So, so John, let's start with the basics. Right. Can you talk to our viewers a little bit about who up fintech and and tiger is sure so up fintech you know we also call it tiger broker in china it's a it's a fintech company uh, our goal is to help chinese invest offshore because we think you know the global asset diversification for chinese investors just start to emerge and we want to be the gateway to enable them to invest anywhere you know offshore so right now like we can do us hong kong london or asia through shanghai hong kong connect so I think we have a very good pl platform to offer to our Chinese users. Can, and, and can you talk a little bit about the addressable market? Sure. You, you know, obviously there's competitors, but you guys are really leading through technology and innovation. Yep. That's right. So first of all, we think the market is really big. You know, it's underpenetrated. So if you're using US and the UK as a standard, you know, typically people have about 20 to 25% of the asset in equities or in offshore equities. But in China, you know, the penetration rate is really low. It's under 5%. So I think, you know, just to increase from 5 to 25, that gives us a lot of gross potential. And also, you know, there are a lot of Chinese already have, you know, asset offshore. You know, traditionally, a lot of those assets tied to real estate, those fixed assets. Yep. So I think, you know, just as China is starting to emerge and, you know, be more connected with the world, people tend to invest more in equities, you know, those, you know, public market securities. That's our age. That's what we want to do. That's what we want to help them to do. When you see the people investing <clears throat> from China, is it the younger people? Is it is it the more mature people, or a combination of both? So I think our company has a very unique user profile. Most of our users, over thirty percent, are under under nice, thirty five years of age. Those guys are better educated. You know, a lot of them work for those TMT and emerging companies sure. in China. So they, they, they are more westernized in a certain way. That's why they wanted to invest offshore. And they love those, like, for example, tech companies in the States. You know, they're not just trading ADRs. They want to trade all the you know, good companies in the world. So that's why Tiger, we are more focused on the US market. We think the market is, is, is much bigger and we have more product to offer to our users. Sure, and, and when you compare yourself to the competition, what do you think differentiates yourself? That's a very good question, David. So, you know, I have a lot of respect for my competitor. Uh, but what I think can set the Tiger apart is, first of all, we have been growing really fast. Uh, I think this is due to like, our execution strategy, you know, the people we have. I think that, that's one of our competitive edge. Another thing is like, we always put compliance as our first priority because, you know, it's a broker-dealer business. So we have to follow, you know, all the regulations in different jurisdictions. Sure. Uh, I think a third reason is my, you know, just the people, you know, the average age of my company is my, most people were born like in 92 or after. Wow. So probably I'm the one, the oldest guy. <laughs> You're in the, company. the old guy. <laughs> yeah. You know, so this is a very young, <laughs> ambitious crowd. Like we just like keep pushing, you know, every day to try to think like what's the best way we can execute, you know, yeah. and keep innovating no matter it's on the technology side or, you know, on the product side, you know. So it's, it's a very, you know, like, um, I would say very, very like up speed, you know, like up yeah. tempo like environment. So that's why like, our company can grow in really fast. I think that's a, our third, actually, you know, I think it's one of the biggest entities we have. Yeah, and I, I, I think culture plays such an important part right. in a company's growth and, and you know, their, their cycle. And it's great to hear that you have such a young, energetic yeah, uh, team. Right. You, 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 you have to lower your target audience to be able to serve them. Right. So our guys, like most of our guys are really relatively young. So they know, like they talk to their friends who is doing offshore investing. They know what they want. 
Sure. You know, that's why how we can keep innovating and stay competitive in the market. Yeah, I'm sure you have a lot of different success stories about helping investors and and such. But does anyone stand out, or you know, any particular users on our yeah, platform? Yeah, yeah, like where, where you might get, oh my God, yeah. like this is you you change the way I invest, you change the way I'm right. my 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 life basically, right? By building assets. Yes, yes. You know, I can share you with a couple of stories. So one of the stories is my. One from a user, and I, he used to trade and I like, during the dot com bubble back back in two thousand. So, you know, the performance wasn't that really good. But since he and I um, started to use our platform uh, after twenty fifteen, he realized that like, the online community we have is very vibrant. We actually provide a lot of education to our users to teach them or guide them how to do proper investing. Yeah. You know? So actually he made us quite a good money after he joined Tiger, use our platform. So I think that's what we want to see is like, we're not just going to be a platform, but we want to be an educational platform. Sure. To help our users grow, especially they are very young right now. We hope they can stay with us for the next 15, 20 years. Yeah, really grow with them as, yeah. they, as they mature, right? That's right. That's what we want to do. So we are in here for the long-term business. Uh, and we are, we are very excited to, to, to be able to help our users, you know, for their future. Yeah. And when you look at the industry, how do you see that changing or evolving, you know, as you think, you know, three, five, maybe longer down the road? Right. So I think the, uh, the industry, just like I mentioned earlier, I think, you know, the global asset diversification for Chinese just started. So I think we are really in a very good upper, you know, trend to, to, to penetrate more in this, this market. So looking forward, like three years, five years down the road, I think, you know, the market will be much bigger because you will have a younger generation come to the market and you will have probably older generation who wants to invest for sure. Sure. You know? So I think, you know, I, I'm just very optimistic about the market going forward for the next three, five years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, it, well, and, and I think, you know, they always say the world is getting smaller, right? right. So I think, you know, just as I think U.S. investors want to invest overseas, right. the overseas investors want to invest here as well. So. That's right. That's right. So eventually want to be the gateway for connecting, you know, all the global capital markets. Yeah. And then talk to me a little bit about your listing on NASDAQ. What does that mean for the company? I think it means a lot. OK, first of all, yes, you know, we are a very young company. We founded in 2014. So five years into, uh, into operation, to be able to list in on NASDAQ, one of the premier exchanges in the world, you know, uh, we feel really proud about it. Okay. So it can drive a lot of morale in the firm, which is really good. The second thing is good, like, it will give us more credibility in front of other competitors, because we are a US NASDAQ listed company. It will help us to, you know, uh, to, to, to acquire more users, because we are more credible. Okay. So this will in turn help our business. I think the third thing about listing in NASDAQ, it, it will make us more transparent as a public company. We will have more pressure, but that's okay. Pressure yeah. makes us improve, okay? So Absolutely. I think that's a good thing, yeah. And, and it was so nice to hear Mr. Wu, your CEO, uh, at the bell ceremony right. talk about his dream of doing this and also how you've incorporated the technology yeah. and the innovation in this right. space. And those are really hallmarks of NASDAQ. So we're, we're so excited to be your partner and congratulate you on the IPO. And, and John, can we, um, can we totally switch gears? I call this a lightning round. Yeah. And just to give our viewers a little, I, I promise it won't embarrass you, <laughs> it won't get us in trouble, but I'm gonna ask you some random questions. Sure. Is that okay? okay? Nothing business related. Okay. You have a mobile device. Right. What's your favorite app? Tiger Tree. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna question that one. Um, when you think back on your career, and, right. and we were talking, we went to the same graduate right. school, NYU, right. which yeah. is a great school. Perfect. Uh, and your, your, your work at Goldman. Yeah. As you think about your career, was there any advice that stood out that really motivated you or guided you? You mean from banking to corporate? Yeah. Well, so or just think, in general? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, first of all, like, I think, you know, just to be focused on what you do. That's very important. The second thing is like, follow your passion. You know, so I have a lot of passion for banking. Right now I have a lot of passion for, you know, online discount broker. That's what like our business. I think the third thing is like, you know, uh, work with the good people and you know, be friends with the good people. Our founder Tianhua, 
he's a very nice person. Yes. And he, he is very smart and he has a very clear vision and he is a very kind, kind person. So those are the people I think, you know, I can work with for a long time. Uh, great answer. And John, the last question. Yeah. Um, when you're not working, right. where can we find you? What do you like to do on, when you're, you know, for fun? Well, when I was younger, I was a backpacker. Okay. <laughs> but right now I'm married, you know, probably I can't No more do, backpacking. No more backpacking. So you mean, probably find me at a bar and you know, get a beer, you know? Yeah. Next time we are in Beijing, call me up. I will, I, I will join you for a beer. Yeah, perfect. So John, thank you again so much. Congratulations on the IPO. Thanks for all our viewers. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Behind the Bell. We're great company uh, this morning up in tech. And joining us again is Chief Financial Officer John Zhang. Thank you very much, Dave.